What's up YouTube? My name is Clickwood and I am back again bringing you guys another video here on my channel and today guys what we are going to be focusing on is fantasy football. Now this is something that I am very very interested in. It I've been playing fantasy football for what probably 12 13 years now I I believe and so I've I've been through it just about every type of league that you could possibly imagine. I've seen it all at this point in fantasy football. And I think that there are a lot of people out there who are young, who are just getting into fantasy football, maybe people who are coming over from Madden and maybe getting themselves more into the actual game of football versus just the video game. And I want to help you guys with that transition. So what I'm going to do is do a little bit of a series here on my fantasy football rankings as we go into the 2014 NFL season. And what I want to do actually is start off by taking a look specifically at the quarterback quarterback position. So what we're going to do is take a look at the top 10 fantasy football quarterbacks as we head into the 2014 season. Starting off at number 10, we have quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, Matt Ryan. And I think Matt Ryan is going a little bit undervalued at this point because Julio Jones and Roddy White are healthy again. And the Falcons really should be in line for a bounce back season, at least on offense. Tony Gonzalez's retirement is going to hurt a little bit in this offense, but at the same time, I think that the healthy return of Roddy White, who tried to play through most of last season, but just you could tell he wasn't at 100%, and then the, the what, 10 games or so that Julio Jones missed, uh, that will definitely be a nice improvement for Matt Ryan this year to have him back. Julio Jones is an elite level talent at the wide receiver position, and it'll be great for for him to have Roddy White and Julio back. I don't see any reason why Matt Ryan can't again be a top 10 fantasy quarterback. He threw too many interceptions last year, but that was a big part due to the fact that he really wasn't comfortable throwing to anybody other than Tony Gonzalez. So it was it was a heck of a lot of guys out there catching passes who he was just not really having great chemistry with. And that a lot of times will lead to interceptions, not to mention Atlanta was just a terrible team. So I expect to see the touchdowns go up. I expect to see the interceptions go slightly down. And Matt Ryan should be a decent quarterback this year for your fantasy team. Definitely somebody to target if you miss out on the top level quarterbacks. Number nine, we have Robert Griffin III, and RG3 was one of the absolute top quarterbacks going into the 2013 season, but then we saw that things like injuries and uh, just a general lack of being able to read offenses really kind of prevented him from even being a good fantasy quarterback last year. But the addition of Deshaun Jackson in Washington does add a nice deep threat for RG3, who's known for having a huge arm. And Jordan Reed is still developing as a uh, pass catcher out, out of the tight end position. He's another year older and, and wiser. He has uh, elite level athleticism, RG, RG3 does. And if it wasn't for an injury concern, and if it wasn't for, you know, just this this general idea that, you know, some people have that Kirk Cousins is going to come and take the job, uh, which I personally do not believe as being a realistic possibility unless RG3 is just ab epically terrible. Um, if it wasn't for those things, I believe that RG3 would be a borderline top five fantasy quarterback going into this season. But we do have to have concerns about the lack of protection that he uh, displays for his own body. He's somebody that's wild. He runs the ball way more often than other quarterbacks, which gives us nice fantasy production when he runs the ball. But at the same time, he's a guy who never slides. And we saw it already in the preseason where he's just getting smashed and he could get easily injured. So that's always a concern. And that's why he's only ranked number nine on my list of fantasy football quarterbacks going into the season. Moving on to number eight, and we have Eagles quarterback Nick Foles, who really shined last season. I mean, he had an insane efficiency level in 2013. He had a 119.2 QB rating. He threw 27 inter or, excuse me, 27 touchdowns and only two interceptions. He would have been rated even higher on my list if he didn't lose Deshaun Jackson this offseason, but Deshaun Jackson was his best weapon in the offense, uh, other than, of course, LaShawn McCoy. But, uh, you know, Deshaun Jackson was definitely the receiver that he had the most chemistry with, but... 
At the same time, Jeremy Macklin is is going to be back this season, and I feel like people are kind of sleeping on him. While he could end up being a complete dud, Jeremy Macklin was borderline as good as Deshaun Jackson before he got injured. I mean, the two of them were very comparable, and I don't see any reason why he can't fill in a lot of the areas where Deshaun Jackson was, at least as far as being a, uh, a reliable target in the offense. And then we've got rookie Jordan Matthews, who's shown some flashes of potential in the in the preseason and in training camp. And then, of course, we have second-year tight end Zach Ertz, who's been looking really good in camp as well. And that could really give Nick Foles a lot of weapons. I think that if Ertz can develop a little bit more and become more of a safety valve underneath for Foles, he could be really, really efficient this year. Now, I do expect that we're going to see a regression in terms of that touchdown to INT ratio. I just don't think that's sustainable for anyone. It's it's just a ridiculous number that we've never even seen anyone approach before. So I like I said, I do expect that to become a little bit more realistic. But at the same time, Nick Foles is a guy who does not take as many chances as other quarterbacks do. So I don't expect to see him in, you know, approaching 15 or more interceptions. It, I, I do think he's probably going to stay around 10 or less. So if he can get to 30, 35 touchdowns, he's going to be an excellent fantasy quarterback. I just wish he had a little bit more mobility. Next, we're on to number seven, and we've got Colin Kaepernick of the San Francisco 49ers, who was a little bit disappointing in 2013, which is why we see him losing some of his hype and falling down a couple of spots from where he was ranked in uh, the preseason of 2013. But the situation for him in San Francisco is actually better here in 2014. Michael Crabtree is back, and he seems to have incredible chemistry with Colin Kaepernick, and Vernon Davis remains one of the absolute best end zone, uh, red zone targets in the entire NFL. Kaepernick is definitely one of the most elusive quarterbacks as well, and he finished with like 525 yards rushing in 2013, and he also had four rushing touchdowns in 2013, which I definitely expect to be another part of his game this season, probably finishing with around those type of numbers, which is definitely a nice bonus because he is probably not going to be a guy that throws for 4,000 yards. So Kaepernick, I think, is a guy that has the potential to be a good quarterback here in this fantasy season. However, I don't really expect him to be at that elite level, which is why I have him ranked here at number seven. Number six, and this is a quarterback who I kind of view as basically being a better version of Colin Kaepernick, and that is Cam Newton. Now, Cam Newton is a guy who has been a very, very good quarterback for the first three seasons of his career, especially at the fantasy level. Um, He is definitely still one of the bright young quarterbacks in the NFL, but we have seen his numbers take a slide back in each of his three seasons. Now, he does have 28 rushing touchdowns in those three seasons, which is an absolutely insane number. I mean, that's the type of numbers that you would hope that your running back gets. But Cam Newton's getting that out of the quarterback position in addition to him throwing for 20 or so touchdowns each season. So when we see that type of production as a runner and we see the uh, improving overall passing game that he has. Now, again, the numbers don't necessarily indicate that, but I believe that Cam Newton is becoming a better overall passer. And I think that we might be able to see that this season. My personal opinion is that the loss of Steve Smith is not going to be as big of a deal as some people are making it out to be. Yes, I understand Steve Smith was his best target. He was the guy that he relied on most in the offense, and Brandon LaFell is gone as well. So we've seen both of his top two wide receivers leave this offseason, but uh, like I said, my opinion is that I think that's a little bit overblown. Now, they did bring in rookie wide receiver Kelvin Benjamin, and I think that Kelvin Benjamin might actually be the kind of guy that Cam Newton could really thrive with. We've already seen Kelvin Benjamin make some nice plays this preseason. He's a huge target. I mean, he is like the level of almost a Kelvin Johnson in terms of just like the physical presence that he has on the field, and I'm not trying to compare him to Kelvin Johnson as far as like a skill set wise, but just like the body shape, the fact that he's just so much bigger than the cornerbacks that he's going to be going up against. He's got a huge wingspan, and if Ka- and if for whatever reason Cam is not quite as accurate as we hope he'd be, 
Kelvin Benjamin's the kind of guy that can go up and make plays on those balls that are not thrown as well. And that's something that he did not have with Brandon LaFell, and it's something that he definitely didn't have with Steve Smith. So I do think that there's a room for improvement this season for Colin Kaepernick in terms of, at least in terms of his passing numbers. I don't really necessarily know that their rushing is going to get back to the rookie level where he was rushing for double digit touchdowns or anything, but if Cam can get somewhere between six to eight rushing touchdowns and somewhere around 25 passing touchdowns this season with Kelvin Benjamin, you know, potentially approaching maybe around 10 receiving touchdowns, I think that that Cam Newton could again be one of the better fantasy quarterbacks this season, and that's why I have him ranked number six. I know a lot of people are down on him coming into this year, but I like Cam Newton. I Like I said, I think that his situation is actually potentially better in terms of passing because of the addition of Kelvin Benjamin. So let's move on now to number five. And we have another young quarterback, and that is Andrew Luck, who threw for 23 touchdowns for the second straight year, and he also cut his interceptions in half this past season from where it was in his rookie year down to just nine interceptions. So the Colts are now a firm pass-first offense, and despite the fact that they have Trent Richardson, I expect Luck to approach 600 pass attempts this season. So that's something that we always like to see from a fantasy level. We love to see guys hitting that 600 number, and that just gives them plenty of opportunities to put up big numbers week to week and over the course of the season. He does still have T.Y. Hilton, does still have Reggie Wayne, and the addition of Hakeem Nix does give Luck an additional option here in the passing game. Somebody who's proven that he can do it before. Now, Hakeem Nix did kind of leave New York in a bad way, I think, but I my personal opinion is that Nix is better than what he performed in the past couple of seasons in New York, and I expect him to be at least a viable option. I don't necessarily know that Nix himself is going to be a great fantasy option, but you know, the five, 600 yards that he might add with a couple of touchdowns here and there does give Luck at least a third target that's a little bit better than what he's had over the past few seasons. I expect Luck to continue to be one of the better quiet, not as, as uh, you know, going out and getting the 100-yard games as like the Colin Kaepernick's and the Cam Newton's and the RG3's, but I think Andrew Luck is the kind of guy that kind of runs goes under the radar as far as his rushing numbers. He could definitely be a top five rusher from the quarterback position this season, and he could put up five or so touchdowns as a runner, so that's a nice number as well. I, liked, I like him for between 25 to 30 touchdowns this season as a passer, so 35 total touchdowns would make make him definitely worth this top five pick as a fantasy quarterback. Moving on now to number four, and we have a guy who has thrown for 5,000 yards before, and that is Matt Stafford. He actually threw for 4,600 yards for the third straight season this past year, and the only thing that people were really worried about for quite a while was the fact that he was getting injured year after year after year. Well, it seems that that's kind of in the past, and he is actually... He's actually been very, very healthy over the past three seasons. I I can't really remember a, a time where he has really had an injury that we were overly concerned about going into a game. The nice thing about Stafford is that we know that he is going to pass the ball. He's almost a lock to throw for 600 plus times and 700 isn't even out of the question. If he approaches that with Calvin Johnson at wide receiver and guys like Golden Tate as a new addition to the offense... And, you know, you've got guys like Reggie Bush and Joyke Bell catching passes out of the backfield. Matt Stafford, if he throws for 700 attempts this season, he is almost a lock to be one of the best values at the quarterback position this season. He might not approach the numbers of the, the top three guys, but anybody other than that, it would be very, very tough for them to approach the numbers that Matt Stafford could do if he ends up throwing the ball 700 times this season. So I do like him as my number four fantasy quarterback going into the year. Moving on now to number three, and I think this is where the tiers kind of break off because Drew Brees is my number three fantasy quarterback, and I consider him to be part of the elite top tier at the quarterback position. 
And the reason that I say that is because Drew Brees has basically been the p- pinnacle of elite fantasy production at the quarterback position ever since he came to New Orleans. He's thrown for over 5,000 yards in three straight seasons. In addition to that, he's thrown an average of 43 touchdown passes over that span. Now, the Saints offense really doesn't have a whole lot of balance, which means that Breeze has been kind of prone to throwing more interceptions than we like to see out of the other elite quarterbacks. But the fact that he throws as often as he does for as many yards as he does, and they're adding more and more weapons, it seems, every year. I mean, he's pretty much a lock to put up elite numbers at the fantasy quarterback position, and I always love to see that. I like to see guys that are a lock for elite numbers, and it's so hard to come by at at fantasy football, and that's why I think that Drew Brees is the kind of guy who I could see as a second-round pick in fantasy football this year, and for people who are at the end of the first round, who are concerned about some of the options that you might have there at other positions like the wide receivers and the running backs that might be there. Drew Brees is the kind of guy who will give you elite level production at a position where you're going to get a ton of points. And although I don't necessarily recommend it, I can see why Drew Brees would be approached as a potential first round pick or at the, in some cases, maybe even early second round pick. I would love to see him as a late second round pick for your fantasy team if you can somehow get him there, but I understand that there are leagues where he is going to definitely be targeted higher than that, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. I wouldn't go higher than probably 10 for Drew Brees, but at the same time, man, that production, I I definitely can't make an argument against the fact that he is going to be a guy who puts up huge numbers for your fantasy team. The question just really becomes, is the position scarce enough? Can you get another quarterback that's going to put up good numbers in later rounds? And I believe that you can. That's why I don't recommend him as a first-round pick. Other than that, though, Drew Brees is an absolute beast, rock star player, definitely the cornerstone of many, many fantasy football fantasy championships over the next or the over the past few seasons, and I don't see any reason why he can't be that again this season. So let's move on now to number two, and this one I think is, it's one that I I I had a tough time with because I've seen the production of Drew Brees and I can't really argue with it, but at the same time, I like to see what Aaron Rodgers does even more than what I see out of Drew Brees. I, the fact that Aaron Rodgers has five straight seasons with over a 100 QB rating is absolutely insane. Now, he did miss major time for the first time in his career this past season, but he still threw for over 2,500 yards in just nine games. So that was very, very impressive. And now we have Randall Cobb back and healthy. Jordy Nelson, or Jordy Nelson, excuse me, has been a steady wide receiver that produces at a great level. And Rodgers is amazing at spreading out the football. Even though he does like to target certain guys, he does target Randall Cobb and Jordy Nelson certainly more than he targets other guys, and the loss of James Jones can't be necessarily overlooked. I think that the reality is that Aaron Rodgers is so effective because he makes defenses not really know where he's going to go with the ball. He doesn't focus in on a guy before the play starts. He just goes through his progressions, finds the guy who's open, and delivers the ball. And that can be extremely frustrating. And that's why he has been so good at throwing so few of interceptions. And that's actually why I have Rodgers slightly ahead of Drew Brees. I think that both of them are capable of throwing 40 or more touchdowns. I definitely think that both of them are capable of throwing for 4,500 or more yards. But the difference is that Aaron Rodgers has only thrown an average of eight interceptions per season since 2009. And Drew Brees is pretty regularly in that like 12 to 15 range. Now, this past year, Brees was better than that. But uh, over the course of the since he came to New Orleans, Drew Brees has been somebody who has turned the ball over a little bit more than we would like to see. And like I said, that's why I have Aaron Rodgers just a slight tick ahead of him. Wouldn't argue by any means, though, if you want to take Drew Brees ahead of Rodgers. It's hard. It's really hard to differentiate differentiate the two. I think they're both elite level quarterbacks. But 
the number one guy, and I don't see how there can be an argument against this, I really don't, is Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning of the Denver Broncos. And I mean, honestly, there are great fantasy seasons, and then there are seasons that you talk about for the rest of your life. And that's what Peyton Manning had in 2000, uh, 2013. The Broncos scored more points than any team in NFL history, and it should come as no surprise that his 55 touchdowns and 5,477 yards were both NFL records. People are worried about the him reproducing those numbers, and I can definitely feel that concern. I don't think it's realistic to believe that Peyton is going to approach that type of total again, but I consider it like this. If Peyton's numbers dropped off by 20%, so one-fifth of his numbers, 20% of them get chopped out, he still finished with 4,381 yards and 44 touchdowns. 44 touchdowns and 4,300 yards. That's being conservative. The loss of Eric Decker is going to hurt, but at the same time, I don't see any reason to think that the loss of Eric Decker is going to be some sort of dramatic change in this offense. I mean, they added a couple players. They've drafted Cody Latimer, and also they brought in Emmanuel Sanders. So although Decker, I think, is more talented than either of those guys, and I don't think either of them is going to produce the numbers that Decker did, I really don't see any reason to think that there's going to be a massive drop-off. They still have Demarius Thomas, who is an absolute rock star, elite wide receiver. Some people even have him ranked as the number one fantasy receiver this season. They have him. They have Julius Thomas, who definitely excelled last season, and he became an elite fantasy tight end. And then they still also have Wes Welker, who is one of the absolute best possession wide receivers in the history of the NFL. Not to mention that, but the Broncos' offensive line is also healthier now than they were a season ago. Ryan Clady, who is one of the absolute rock star, best left tackles in the NFL, missed basically what I think he might have missed the entire NFL season last year. I think he did. And he is back. He's healthy, and there's no reason to believe that Peyton Manning is going to get hit more. There's no reason to believe that he's not going to have the time that he did last year where he was just destroying defenses and finding the holes and making the passes. To be honest with you, I don't see any reason why the Broncos won't be the highest scoring team in the NFL again this season. Maybe they don't set the record again, but even if they don't set the record, they're still going to be the best offense in the NFL. Um, I, I know some people still think that the Saints could be, and some people are saying the Packers as well, but to me, uh, the the Broncos were so far and away the best offense last season that even if they take a big step back, they're still number one. And with that being said, Peyton Manning is a legit first round pick. And that's not something that I say easily. I've never been somebody that suggests taking a quarterback in the first round of fantasy football drafts because like I said before, in most years, there is not a whole lot of difference between say your third ranked quarterback and and your eighth ranked quarterback. For the most part, they are coming fairly close to one another in terms of what their final end of year production is. But in this case, we have a guy like Peyton Manning who set the NFL record for the, I mean, legitimately, he scored more fantasy points this past season than any player in the history of the NFL. Think about that. In the entire time that fantasy football has existed, the entire time that football has existed, even if you extrapolated it out and said before the years of where fantasy football began in the 90s or or the 80s, uh, even if you go back and look at the 70s and the 60s and, you know, decades and decades before that, no one has scored more points than than Peyton Manning. That's insane. Peyton Manning is a legitimate first-round pick in fantasy football. I have him ranked about 7th overall. And like I said, the only reason that he isn't higher than that is because we've got a couple guys up here like Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees who could potentially give you close to those numbers. But at the same time, though, I just I I don't see how you can have anybody ranked ahead of Peyton Manning. He's coming off of the best season ever as a quarterback, and they're improved in many areas on their offense. So I love Peyton Manning. I don't have any problem with people taking him in the top five 
of fantasy football. Like I said, I have him at number seven, but uh, it's hard to argue against him being a top five player. He's an absolute monster, and I expect him to to approach another 45 to 50 touchdown season, which easily would make him the, the best player on many, many teams. So I love that. I love Peyton Manning, and everybody is always going to want to be the smartest guy in the room, but you don't have to necessarily be that. If you want to take Peyton Manning with your first round pick, if you want to lock up those fantasy points and you want to make sure that you do not make a mistake, as many of us do, guys who took Trent Richardson last year, guys who took Doug Martin last year in the first round, guys who were taking other players like uh, an Alfred Morris, for example, those type of production numbers did not come anywhere near what they what they would have gotten if they would have taken somebody like Peyton Manning. It's just the way that it is. Quarterbacks are a lot easier to predict than some of these other positions, particularly running back. And that's why I understand why people will take a quarterback. They want to minimize that risk early. Just make sure that if you take a Peyton Manning, you take an Aaron Rodgers, or you take a Drew Brees in the first round, that you address the other positions. Primarily, we need to focus on running back after that point in the next few rounds. If you take Peyton Manning in the first round, I do not want to see you taking Seattle's defense in the sixth. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to make sure that over your next three or four picks that you're drafting basically exclusively running backs and wide receivers because those are the positions that you're going to need to complement Peyton Manning and really put together that fantasy football championship team. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure that you press that like button below, and I want to hear your comments as well. Do you guys agree with me on these rankings? Where do you guys have the players ranked? Do you think Peyton Manning is the number one player, or do you have somebody like Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees up there? And also, is there somebody who's missing from this top 10 list that should be on there? Thank you, guys. I really do appreciate it. I hope this video helped you. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap things up today. If you're new to the channel, make sure you press that subscribe button, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.